Hi, I'm Simon and welcome to Watercolour Wildlife. In this lesson, I'm going to take you through colour theory. And it's a bit of a minefield to a lot of people. Um, easy to get confused, but I'm going to simplify it down, try and give you the basics uh, and the essentials that you need um, to get started in watercolours, basically. If you follow this process, you will have an understanding of colour theory by the end of it, I promise you. And it will stand you in good stead in, throughout your watercolour career. I wish I'd known some of this stuff very early on when I started painting. So let, grab your brushes and let's get painting. Okay, the, the very first thing I want you to get in into your heads, I suppose, is that there are warm and cool primaries. So there's not just red, yellow, and blue, there are warm and cool tones of each of those. And the reason I recommend this Daniel Smith set, so there's a Daniel Smith set of paints and it's called the Watercolor Essentials Set. And at first glance, you might look at that and say, okay, it's why have I got two of each color? I've got two blues, two reds, and two yellows. Surely where's my green and my orange? You know, I want those in a basic set, surely. But obviously we know we can mix those. Um, and knowing that there are two, that there is a warm and a cool uh, primary, so a warm and a cool of each, is uh, is what I want you to hold. So just remember that, warm and a cool of every primary. And that's gonna really help me explain all of this. So you'll all have seen color wheels, I'm sure at some point. Um, if you haven't, it's a rainbow essentially, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Uh, goes around in a circle, nicely arranged uh, in complementaries. So once you've realized that we've got in your head that there is a warm and a cool primary, this color wheel and mixing colors is gonna make a lot more sense. Uh, and I've put my color wheel here and I've laid out this Daniel Smith set of colors uh, where they should go in terms of being a warm blue or a cool red, a warm red, a warm yellow, a cool yellow, and a cool blue. Um, and this is cool because it's got more green in it. It's closer to, to the green so that I would describe that, it's gonna have more green in it, it's a cool green. This blue has more red in it, so it's closer to the violet, so it's a, it's a warmer blue. This red has more blue in it, so it's a cooler red. This red has more orange in it, so it's a warmer red. So you've got warm, a cool red and a warm red. Same with the yellow. I mean, New Gamboge is a color that it, it is quite orange, but we're gonna, it's a, we're calling it a yellow, a, a warm yellow. Um, and then we've got the cool yellow this side. So the warm yellow has got a lot more red in it. So it's much closer to the, the red. And this cool yellow has got a lot more green in it. So it's a lot more green. Now I'm gonna try and show you what happens when you mix these colors together, basically. Essentially, to get a really nice bright green, you want to mix the closest colors on the color wheel together. So you don't want to mix a warm blue and a warm yellow to make a bright green. Okay, you want to mix these, these, these colors are closer to, together on the color wheel, so they're going to make a brighter green, essentially. And the same goes on this side. You want to mix the colors that are closest together on the color wheel. So you don't want to mix a, a cool yellow with a cool red, for example. You want to mix a, a warm yellow with a warm red. And both of those, you know, contain more of the other. This contains more orange and this contains more orange than its cooler counterpart. So this contains more orange, this contains less orange. So if you're trying to achieve orange, use the two colors that contain the most orange. Mix them together, you're gonna to get a really vibrant orange. Same on this side. Um, you know, you've got a, a blue with lots of red in it and a red with lots of blue in it. So mix those together and you're gonna get a beautiful violet. So I'm now gonna show you that. So I'm gonna stick this color wheel down on the side so you can still see it and we can refer to it. Um, I can 
leave that there as well, just so you see the, the basic colors there. Now what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna stay clear of my palette for this. I've drawn out this, um, this chart. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to watercolorwildlife.com and print this out. Uh, if you print it out onto watercolor paper, then you can basically just go through the steps um, without having to kind of draw all of this out. So, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go with my cool blue first, and that's a, a thallo blue. Don't worry about the names. What you wanna remember, we've got a cool blue. There's our cool blue. And there's our warm blue. And that's ultramarine, just so that you know. And then we've got a, a new gamboge, which is a warm yellow. You'll put a spot there. And a cool yellow. This is Hansa Yellow Light. You see the difference? I mean, this is very orange. There are more subtle colors, but this is uh, kind of subtle, subtly warm yellows, I suppose, than that. But for the purposes of this essential set, this is a great combination of colors. So I've got quinacridone um, rose, and that is a cool red. So I'm putting that there. And my warm red. So I've got those colours laid out in their correct spot on the colour wheel. Um, this, you'll, if you you might have heard this re referred to as a, a split primary palette. And what that does is give you two primaries and they are split into warm and cool. So it's often referred to as a split primary palette. Um, just remember cool and warm primaries. You know, every time you're looking at a paint, think is that a cool blue, warm blue? Cool yellow, warm yellow, cool red, warm red. You need to be able to tell the difference between those to be able to mix colors properly or achieve the colors that you want. Um, okay, so let's see, let's start seeing what happens when we mix these. I'm gonna just take these away. We'll pop them over here. Okay, and I've got my cool, cool colours down that side and my warm colours down that side. Put that there. Just got a little bit of water on my brush. And I'm going to show you this, this cool blue. So this is a thallo blue. I'm just going to get this wonderful, deep, rich colour. And I'm going to rinse my brush with each colour that I go into. And just grab some of this ultramarine and just drag that down and let it let it mix. And you can see this is warmer, this is cooler. So again with the red, let's go with our, our cool red. So just drag this down, try and get a nice even covering down to here. And then here's our warm red. So you can see instantly it's got much more orange in it. And just mix them in the middle so that you kind of see how they blend together as well. And then our yellow. So we've got a, a warm yellow. It's a very warm yellow, you know, as I said, it's ver erring on the side of, of orange. Well, it is, you know, very, very warm yellow. Rinse my brush. And we've got our cool yellow. This is a Hansa Yellow Light. This is a new Gamboge, sorry, I didn't say that. And then I'm just gonna blend them together in the middle. So you can see, you know, you get a really lovely color in the middle there as well. Okay, so this is where the, the color theory start bit starts, I suppose. So we've got these, these warm and cool colors. I want a really bright green in here. So I'm gonna take 
the cut the the yellow and the blue that are closest to each other on on the color wheel to achieve this lovely bright green so let's grab this and if i put you know a bit of blue here rinse that out a bit of yellow here we're not going to need quite as much of this yellow as that blue. Now I just want, I want you to watch as I just start merging these together. The lovely bright green I get. You can mix in, you know, more yellow, more blue, just to vary that, that shade a bit. Really nice, lovely, vibrant green. Now where that's been placed is opposite the red and that means those two are complementary colours. You'll see on your colour wheel green is opposite red. Um, those colours are as far apart on the colour wheel as you can get. They're essentially 180 degrees apart so those are opposite colours. They refer to them as complementary colours but you can think about them as opposite colours. So they are opposite. Um, and the same's gonna, same's gonna happen uh, over here. So to mix an orange, really nice bright orange, I'm gonna take my red and my yellow that are closest to each other on the color wheel. Just put a bit of red in here. That's my warm red and my cool yellow. Um, sorry, my, my warm yellow. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to mix these together. I'm going to get a really nice, probably need a bit more yellow in that. I'm just going to touch a bit of yellow there, just to give it a bit more balance. And you see this gorgeous, bright orange. And where's the orange gone? Opposite the blue. So where does the, this means these are complementary colors. So the complementary of blue is orange. Completely opposite on the, on the color wheel. Um, okay, so we wanna mix these two. So your cool red and your warm blue. So these are closest together. Again, on the color wheel. Can just drop in a nice amount of that. pigment there. So now I'm just going to mix these in together. Look at that gorgeous kind of violet. I might want a little more blue in there maybe. You know you can vary it so just putting a bit more of the blue up here, mixing it in. You get that lovely variety of really bright, vibrant kind of um, violet there. And where's the violet gone? Opposite, you know, we'll call this purple, violet. Um, it's opposite the yellow. So those two are complementaries. So you've now mixed some, you know, some gorgeous secondaries, which are what these are. You mix primaries together and you get secondaries. So you've got your primaries and orange, purple and green which are your secondaries, and those are made from mixing primaries. But if you're after vibrancy, the important thing to remember is to mix the colors that are closest together. So closest together on the color wheel, those colors are gonna, are gonna sing together. They want to, to blend together. Um, so I'm gonna, what I want you to do at this point, I guess, if you're following this along, and what I'm gonna show you is just a, a way of blending colors there are obviously colors in between this you know you make a combination here of the color that you've got here in this color and 
and you can get subtle gradation um, in between those. But I've kind of got those within there so you can see that this color virtually matches that, that virtually matches that. This is, well, kind of somewhere close to here. It's probably a bit more of a transition there. This is very close to that. Um, so that works really nicely. Now, to kind of instill this, this warm, cool idea in your head, I've drawn a, a load of marks down the side of here, just spaced them one and a half centimeters apart, and I've written cool yellow there. You can see that iPad pinging? That's my producer, Phil. Hi, Phil. He's sending me messages on my iPad and interrupting my flow. I'm going to try and turn it off, but yeah, that, that's Phil. That's the guy that edits all the videos and stuff, so big shout out to Phil. Okay, so I've started with a cool yellow. Now, what I want you to think about is, okay, what color can I put next to a cool yellow? So what color can I transition to from that cool yellow? Now, if I look at my, my color wheel, the, the closest colors to it from my primaries, this is, so the closest color to my cool yellow is a cool blue. So I could go from a cool yellow to a cool blue, or I can go from a cool yellow to a warm yellow. So I'm gonna put down a, a cool, a cool blue. Yeah, cool blue there. So I've got my cool, I've gone to my cool blue. And where can I go from that? I can go to a warm blue or a cool yellow. Now those are the two colors that are, that are closest to each other. So I'm gonna go from there to, let's say a warm blue. So I've got my ultramarine, we've put a dab of warm blue there. Now, I'm gonna follow this process. Where can I go from a warm blue? Well, I can go back to cool blue or I can go to a cool red. So I'm gonna go cool red. And again, I'm up here now, cool red. I can go to warm red, so let's do that. Let's go to warm red. Warm red can either go to warm yellow. So let's go to, we haven't got a kind of orange there, so let's go to a warm yellow. Warm yellow can go to cool yellow or back to red, so let's go the cool yellow. We get a lovely kind of this rainbow there that's going to flow really nicely. So I'm just going to go through this a few times. We'll do a time lapse here so just jump through those. You don't need to sit and watch me doing it but what I'm doing is going from you know making sure that I stay close on the color wheel so I'm on cool yellow. So cool yellow where am I going to go? I guess feel this, you can speed up. Okay, so we're back in the room. I've done that and I've gone from, you can see cool yellow, cool yellow cool to cool blue, then to a warm blue, then a cool red, then a warm red, warm, ye warm yellow, cool yellow, back to a warm yellow, then back to a warm red, then back to a cool red, then he here I actually made a mistake. I went the wrong way. I put a warm blue on. Um, you can see I've tried to lift that out. It was that I needed to go. So what I did there, I went from a warm red to a warm blue. And we've got this cool red in between, so I've missed that transition. So corrected myself there and yeah, put the, the cool red there. So from cool red, we can go to warm blue, warm blue, cool blue. From cool blue, we can go to cool yellow. Cool yellow to cool blue again, then to warm blue and then to warm red. So 
All of these colours are close on the colour wheel. They're the closest matches. And this is a really good way of getting vibrant colours. So once you've laid all this out, what we're gonna do is just watch what happens when we go through this lot. So just getting perhaps a bit too much water there. Loosen up my yellow. Get a nice amount of that yellow there. Now I'm gonna do this to save me to speed up a little bit. I'm gonna do all of the yellows at the same time. So just gonna go here and here. Just do those yellows. Okay, now I know yellows, if there's, a, if there's a blue next to these yellow, these cool yellows, it's gonna be a cool blue. So this is our fallow blue. I'm just gonna mix that. Um, and I know it's here. I've also got it the other side of this one, so it's there. Touch more water. I'm just gonna let these colors bleed together. Not doing too much mixing here. I want them to, to merge together naturally and it will just give you a great variation. Um, and you'll see how these colors work. So, so from our cool, our cool blue, uh, we're going to a warm blue, so this is ultramarine. And that'll mix perhaps a little bit too much water in there, but that'll, those two colors will go really nicely. And then from the cool blue here, you see we've got a warm blue next to it. And those are kind of gonna transition into each other beautifully. And again, down the bottom here, so from the cool blue, I've gone to a warm blue. Just see the bit, touch more water. Okay, now into our red. So we've gone from a warm blue into a warm red. And these are gonna give us a lovely violet purple when they mix together. So it's the same mix here. So doing the purple, you know, mixing it with a warm blue. Here again, you know, there's a warm blue, so I'm gonna have that, that cool red next to it. Okay, so let's go to our warm reds, and those are next to our, our cool reds. Let me just mix that in, mix this one in. And these colors will work, you know, these cool and warm reds, cool and warm blues, they'll mix well together. And then we're on to our warm orange, our warm yellow. That's just going to finish off that transition between those warm reds and the cool and the cool yellow. The only place I might just have a little play is just with this this little yellow here, just to get a bit more of that wonderful green that will come in between there. Now that is a, a super vibrant array of colors. Um, and if you stick to mixing those, those colors, uh, you know, trying to keep the colors together when you're mixing a secondary and you want vibrant colors, make sure that the primaries that you're using are as close together on the color wheel as possible. Um, follow that pattern, print it out um, if you want to, and then, or just, you know, lay your paints out like this and go through this process because it will really help just cement this idea in your head of this cool and warm primary um, that you need to focus on. So, now that we know how to mix vibrant colours, you know, we don't want every painting to be like this. Certainly don't want them necessarily to be as bright as that. And by knowing um, what makes uh, super vibrant colours, we're kind of indirectly being taught what makes uh, muted colors. So I'm gonna go through the same process uh, on this side, but not following that rule. So um, uh, we will do that. I'm gonna start again 
with a, a, lem, a, a cool yellow. So cool yellow. Now I could go to a warm yellow or what I've done here is gone to a cool blue. Instead of going to a cool blue, I'm gonna to go to a warm blue. So I'm mixing a, a cool yellow with a warm blue. Um, and then warm blue, I could, I could normally go to a cool red, but I'm gonna go with a warm red. Now from warm red, I could go to a cool red or I could go to a warm yellow. So I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna go with a cool yellow. Then from cool yellow, I could go to a, a cool blue. So I'm gonna go back to a warm blue. Now what I don't want next to a warm blue is a warm red. So I'll pop that warm red in there. Do need to somehow get to the cool red by going against against the colour. So the cool. I just trying to do this the wrong way round. It's actually quite tricky. <laughs> so this is a warm red. I could go to a you know back to the cool blue. You know, this is where I could go, you know, I've got the cool blue. I shouldn't really be mixing that with a cool red either. So I'm gonna go cool red there. I say I shouldn't be mixing it. So if I want vibrant colors, I shouldn't be mixing it. So we've got red, uh, the cool reds there. We could go from cool red to warm red. Um, we could go yeah, so what we don't want to do is go from cool red to a cool yellow. So we're going to put a cool yellow there so that you can see. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to speed it all up um, and just jump to the end. You don't need to sit there and watch me doing all of this. Okay, so I'm back in the room and we've laid it all out, kind of going against this rule. So showing you what happens when you mix colors that are far away from each other on the color wheel. Uh, so instead of, you know, keeping them close together, we're splitting them apart. Still using a red and a yellow next to each other to make an orange, but just showing you the difference between using a red and a yellow that are far apart on this color wheel as opposed to ones that are close together. So. Put that there for a minute and let's just go into it. So we've got our cool yellow. Now where I went on the other side was from cool yellow to cool blue. Now we're going from cool yellow to warm blue. She just perhaps overpowered that a little bit. And then from Warm blue, I would normally go to a cool red, but I'm going to a warm red. I'll just mix that up a bit. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna go through and do each of the same color. These are all my warm reds. You can see how dirty these, or how muted these colors are already compared to the other side. Okay, so let's go with our, our yellows. So this is a cool yellow into a warm red. So 
this again here. Let's go through that yellow as well. That's another cool yellow that I've got there. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to my warm blues. So I've got a warm blue into a, a yellow, into a, a cool yellow and into a warm red. So these are kind of far away from each other on the spectrum on that color wheel. And again, so we've got a, a warm blue here. You can see here, instead of being this lovely kind of green, bright green color that we've got here, we've got quite a muted, a muted gray almost. Okay, so here we've got a, where are my other ones? So this will be a ultramarine. So we'll do the same thing there. You see a similar sort of effect. What's red? What's this one? This is, this is. Okay, so that's going from warm, warm red to a cool blue. So you're just gonna drag a bit of this red through here to get that mix going. You can see. Okay, and then I've got this cool red that's going into a cool yellow here and a warm blue. going into warm red and a cool red. And then here, cool blue with a warm yellow. See this kind of muddy green that you get. And then we're back onto a warm blue. Now, I'm sure you can just see instantly from comparing this side to comparing this side, kind of, I suppose, what a mess this is in terms of vibrancy and colors working well together. They just don't sit very well. Um, if you're trying to get a, a vibrancy from it, they are, they're gonna cancel each other out. So go through this process as well, play around with it, try and get your mixes wrong in this side. I'm gonna say wrong for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, you can, if you want a muted green, if you want these muted colors, then use these colors to produce that muted color. But we'll get into that later. Hopefully from this exercise, you can see that the, the transitions from, from color to color here, and the vibrancy is, is so much greater than this side. This just looks kind of all over the place. It doesn't blend well together. Uh, the, the colors don't mix well. Um, so yeah. Okay, so the last bit is just going through mixing, mixing all of these colors. And I can actually just take, you know, what I've marked on my, on my page here. So I've got a warm red in this corner. And this is just, hopefully will just help clarify the whole thing in your mind a little bit. So that's a cool red. And here we've got our cool yellow, a warm yellow. And if you print this out, you'll see why I've, I've done it in this shape in a minute. So cool blue, which is our fallow blue. As I said, don't get too wrapped up in the colors if you're just starting out and the names of the colors and that sort of stuff. Um, just think cool warm. Is it a cool blue? Is it a warm blue? Okay, so that's a warm blue. Now, what do we, basically what we wanna mix in between here, so to get our orange, is we're gonna mix different, slightly differing amounts of these two colors. So to get a slightly redder orange, we're gonna have a bit more of this, and 
you know, to get a slightly yellow or orange, we're going to have a bit more of that side. So I'm going to start initially just working on just spreading out this red. This is, you can just use this in there and you've got this lovely pyrrole red. Really warm. And I'm just going into my, my cool red. Just rinse that out. And I've got my warm yellow. My cool yellow. Cool blue. Warm blue. Now, we've got spaces for our, our secondary colours here. So for this one we want more red and they want to, you want to take it from this red. So I'm going to put in a fair amount of red. And just a little bit of orange. This side, I'll start with this yellow, this warm yellow, and then just add a little of this cool, cool red. So same again here, we've got a cool blue and that obviously wants to go with our cool yellow. You know, our cool blue is here and our cool yellow is here. So we're gonna have in this one, gonna have a lot of blue, a lot of this cool blue. And then some of this cool yellow. Not too much of that. Lovely bluey, bluey green. And then the opposite, start with get as much yellow on here as we can. And just add a little touch of this blue. Be much more yellowy green. Okay, so here, joining on from the colour wheel, I've got my warm blue. That's obviously going to go to my cool, my cool red. Let's grab my warm blue. It down on there. Touch of this cool red. We have a little bit more pigment in that. And then this side, I'm just going to start with a whole lot of red. Let's just bled that yellow in there a little bit. Let's lift that out. And 
and then just a touch of this blue. We have a much more, a much pinker. We'll put a touch of blue in here. That's to give us that uh, difference in colour. And there it is. You know, you've used your, your warm, your warm and your cool primary to mix lovely, vibrant secondaries. Um, and by doing it like this, what's naturally happened is that the complementary colour has been placed above the other one. So with the complementary of red is green. You see you've got the reds above the greens. The complementary of orange is blue. So you've got these. But also the complementary of a of a cool of a, a cool red is a cool blue. The complementary of a warm red is a, a slightly yellowy green. So it's a sort of a warmer green rather than a bluer green. Um, hopefully these exercises are just kind of getting it clear in your head. The reason I have this third box at the bottom here is just to very quickly show you what happens when you mix complementary colours. So we've got these oranges, we've got our, our complementaries. I want to show you what happens when you mix this colour with this colour. And that's, I don't know if this is wet enough or whether I can get any of that, that green. So basically what happens is, you know, this has got yellow, a lot of yellow, a little bit of green and a little bit and this red. So I'm going to reproduce that by putting red down. And I've got this cool yellow. Which gives us our orange. And we need the cool blue. We grab some of this cool blue here, pop this in, and just give this a good mix. That's a little too blue, but what you can see is that you get, these colors start to cancel each other out. You get a very muted shade of gray, I suppose. And that's quite a, it's maybe a bit of a bluey gray, you know, it's a bit of a greeny gray. You could add a little bit more red into that if you wanted to get it closer to you see how you get it goes gray so mixing complementary colors the opposite on the color wheel is going to give you a gray and that's lovely if you want to mix grays now you know how to mix grays and there's a whole variety of grays that you can mix so here we've got our cool red you know all of these are going to produce a slightly different shade of gray you're mixing complementaries together. So this is a really bluey green. So there's a lot of this blue in there. So you're going to put a lot of that blue in. And that just had, you know, that's just got a touch of the yellow in it. So we'll put a touch of this yellow. That's your cool yellow. You can just see how, as soon as I put that yellow in, it just starts to knock it back. And just graze it, graze it out. See, very, very muted. That's slightly green. So you could add a touch more red. You know, the complementary of green is red. So if it's too green, put a touch of red in there. And you've got a fairly neutral gray again. Let's speed this up. Don't have to watch me doing it all, but I'm going to do it. We'll speed it up, cut through it so you can see the effect, but it's not going to take as long. So.
again, I'm back in the room. Um, that's done. And what you can see is by mixing each of these primaries together, uh, each of these, sorry, these complementaries, but you can see by mixing each of these complementaries together, you get a muted gray. And that's because they're opposite each other on the, on the color wheel, and they're gonna basically cancel each other out, producing this range of grays. And you can adjust, you know, the, the coolness, the warmness, the, the temperature of these grays, just by adding one or other of its constituent parts. So, you know, if this is looking a bit blue, we put in a bit more of this orangey red. Um, and it will just balance it. And I'm gonna do a whole tutorial uh, on mixing grays, but as this is about color, um, we're not gonna go too far into that now. And hopefully, if you run through this tutorial, it will give you an understanding of color theory, complementaries, how, you know, primaries, how to get these vibrant colors, how to mix muted colors, you know, by mixing, by making these muted colors, uh, it gives you much more natural colors. So if you're um, trying to produce colors in nature, they're very often much more muted than these very, very vibrant vibrant colors so go through this process um, and once you've done it I think you'll really have a much better understanding of color theory and how to mix colors vibrantly um, how to keep that that vibrancy in watercolor is one of the the joys of watercolor so knowing how to preserve that or if you want to get rid of it you know to mute those colors down it's a, it's a really useful skill to have. So I hope I've nailed color theory for you, or at least the basics of it. Um, I'm gonna do lots more videos on theory, on color theory and mixing grays, uh, you know, looking at secondaries, perhaps when you wanna buy some secondary colors. Uh, but for the meantime, I hope that covers it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you've got some value out of this, then please subscribe or, you know, give me a thumbs up leave me a comment in the in the comments uh, just to let me know what you've kind of got from it love to hear from people it's great having feedback i can't exist in a bubble um, artists need feedback so give it to me and i hope i'll see you in the next one